<clears throat> What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona. And today we are going to talk about the Arizona transportation conundrum that we have ourselves in, not because of anyone's fault, but we have we control our future, right? The state of Arizona, the destiny of our transportation solutions and whatnot are within the palm of our hands, and we can control that if we're aware of what our opportunities and options are. And that's what we're going to discuss in this video. We're going to discuss light rail, high speed rail, any sort of rail, highway expansion projects that are taking place, not just Highway 11, not just Loop 202 extensions, but the whole, the whole deal, right? We're also going to talk about what's been going on with these wrong way drivers on freeways. We had in the state, in the Valley of Phoenix, we had five wrong way drivers in five days and they ended up very serious accidents. Okay. So this wrong way driving thing is coming up uh, quite a bit and we're going to talk about that. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this. If you guys are just tuning in, you're out there, smash up the likes and we're going to talk about transportation. I want to hear from you where you're watching from. And I also want you guys to be chiming in what you guys think we should be doing about the uh, transportation solutions around Arizona and in particular around Phoenix and Tucson. So let me just give a little bit of context to why this is coming about. So on August 25th, or is it August 23rd or August 25th? Like it's August 27th. Sorry about that. There's a proposition 105. If it gets a yes vote, that means that they vote to end funding for light rail extensions and any future rail projects throughout the state. So if you're one of those people who agrees that we should be looking to do more rail, not less, okay, then you should be voting no on Prop 105. If 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 you think that uh, we should stop the, the rail plans, just put a kibosh on it, then vote no. I mean, vote yes. So voting yes is to stop any more rail. Now, here's the case for why I'm a big fan of rail. We talked about it on the last video uh, hey, what's going on, Tennessee? We talked about it on the last video where high-speed rail in China, for example, goes 220 miles an hour, 270 miles an hour. Some of them go that fast. You could go from Phoenix to Los, Los Angeles on a high-speed rail solution in about two, two and a half, three hours. You could go from Phoenix to Tucson in about, and uh, it could be, depending on how fast it goes, as quick as 45 minutes. Uh, and, you know, that could be done, right? But it's not going to get done if they kill if they kill the whole idea and they say Phoenix in Arizona is going to completely rely upon the automobile. Now let's just talk about this before you get too persuaded by what the the reasons why you wouldn't want to do it. The number one reason is they say it's a money pit. It doesn't work. People don't ride it, and it's like a self fulfilling prophecy that occurs for these people who are against it. But they're being fueled by who? Fossil fuel industry has lobbyists that do not like rail. Why would the fossil fuel industry not like rail? Well, what do you have to do about once a week? Put petroleum in your vehicle. If we had more people driving or taking trains across America or even in the world, who is not going to be getting your weekly stipend of $55 or whatever your charge is to fill up your tank? The petroleum companies. So, yeah, it is going to hurt their bottom line if America and the rest of the world started riding trains and other things that are not related to fossil fuels. Kind of the same reason why we don't see more electric cars on the road. Why is it taking so long for the electric car industry to get out there? And some of you guys have even said, well, solar on our houses. Why, why aren't more people putting solar on the houses? Well, hold on. There's a lot to there's a lot to learn with that, too. And who stands to lose from that? The monopolies who control the power grids. And they're not going to just give up very easily. So um, you have to take that into consideration. So we've got some comments coming in. I'm just going to check on them real quick. Smash up the likes if you're just tuning in, please. Did you see the crazy hostage situation at the quick stop place in Phoenix? No, I did not. Hello from Wichita. Wichita, welcome. Seattle, transportation isn't much better. No, and it's not that Phoenix has worse or better or anything like that. It's just saying here in Phoenix, we can talk about what's going on, what we think about Phoenix. Traffic, you know, you guys have, it doesn't matter where you're at, you're going to have stop and go traffic. You're going to have traffic jams unless you live in the middle of the, um, you know, nowhere where there's not a lot of traffic, right? 
But because of this, also take into consideration, you guys saw what was going on with the wrong way drivers in Phoenix. Okay, so it's it's not necessarily the, the freeway systems problem, but this is happening and it's been happening really frequently. It happens quite a bit more often than than you would think. And I don't think you want to be driving if you got someone who's maybe I don't know what they're on. They're saying they're drunk, they're saying they're on Ambien, they're saying they're on Adderall, they're on these different pharmaceuticals and the world we live in today, people are taking these. So uh, whether it be drunk driving or driving under the influence of some pharmaceutical, people are doing it. And it's really a, a bad thing because people going 60 miles an hour in the wrong direction, not even aware of the fact. And it could be your wife. It could be your husband. It could be your kids on the road. And here's a wrong way driver that you're that's dark at night, nine o'clock at night. And you can't tell if that wrong way driver is in your lane. And he's coming 55 and you're going 60 that closes in really quickly. And, and you might not be able to move left or right because there might be a car coming and these wrong way drivers keep happening. And, you know, some people don't really have a choice, but to be on the road and they should, if, if we had better solutions or more solutions than just driving on automobiles, maybe some of these people would be taking the train or the tram or some public transportation solution that was near them. So let's see what we have here. Some more, um, yes, sympathy for Texas. Very tragic situation that happened in Texas. Uh, that was terrible. I don't know what to do about uh, that. I don't know what the answer to that is gonna be. Um, the mass transit is awesome in Chicago and thanks for the compliment about the Bitcoin hat. So Bitcoin shirt too. <laughs> So many drill points in California, Texas, Oklahoma. We need to go rails and save our environment. It, it's, it's, I, we, you know, we don't want to pound the drum of being these super uh, environmentalists because, you know, we're not like, it, then we just sound like we're pretentious do-gooders who, who know better than others. But there's very good reason to want to, to want rail solutions. And it's more than just being a good person even though, you know, that's obviously what this, you know, we, we all want to live in a better world than we let, you know, that's the whole goal, right? Leave the world a better place than you came in. And I think that alternatives to automobiles, I mean, I've lost family members to car accidents. Some of you have lost uh, family members to car accidents. It's really a tragic thing. And I think it just keeps coming up. The automobile should not be the only solution uh, that we have here. So, um, here we go. Sorry, I was cutting off all those sounds. Um, sounds like they need to get more signage and better public safety awareness in Arizona for the wrong way drivers. More TV, more social media to account for this. So what they've actually done is they're now charging the bar. So if they find out that the patron was at the bar who was the wrong, wrong way driver. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll find out who the wrong way driver is. See where their latest transactions came from. And if their latest transactions were associated to a bar, then the bar is on the hook. Do you guys agree that they should be charging the bar as, as a perpetrator in this? If individual accountability has someone who has four or five drinks or 10 gets behind the car and then gets on the wrong direction on the I-17 or I-10, should the bar be held liable? Well, that's what they're doing now is they're going after the bars for this, blaming them. Um, Travasso says, literally the traffic in Chicago is so much worse than Arizona and without public transport, it would be just awful. I hope that the public transportation in Arizona grows to be good. Can you post links to, to who to write to? Yes, I can look to do that as this uh, video goes along. Also, you guys can join our group right there, Living in Arizona, where this conversation will be continuing. So if you need to get uh, any links, you guys can share those links in the group. Join the group right there, Living in Arizona, I just posted. And um, so as far as this goes, if you're just joining, there's a new proposition. It's called Prop 105. If you if you don't think that if you think that we should keep building rail solutions in Phoenix, you're going to want to vote no against that proposition, because if you vote yes, you're voting to defund and stop all rail extensions. Now, as we talked about, one of the problems that we're seeing is people aren't riding the rail. Now, why are they not riding the rail? So it's, well, people are riding the rail, but not the not the business types, not the professionals, not the working class. It's mostly the, the people who are um, sleeping outside that are riding the rail, which is not a bad thing. It's just 
those people don't typically have money. So they're also riding the rail for free. So the rail system's not making any money because the people with money aren't, ri aren't riding it. And why are they not riding it? Why would you not want to ride the rail in Phoenix if it exists? Why do I not ride the rail in Phoenix if it exists? Three reasons. Let me give you three reasons real quick. All right, 16 people smashed up the likes, 43 people watching, so the video is growing and getting out there. Thank you. All right, so number one reason, it doesn't go anywhere close to my house, so I can't access it. I have to go 35 minutes away to get up, to get to the nearest station to ride the rails. So it's the grid is still not in place. Number two, people who are, are professional business class do not want to ride with people who are stinky, smelly, drunk, on drugs, panhandling, doing all that stuff around them. And if you haven't ridden the Phoenix light rail, I'm telling you right now, that's what's going on. So that's number two reason why people in tuxedos in the working class are not riding it. And young people also like girls, young girls, mothers, they don't want to ride the rail with that if they have to. So it's like, it's, it's, it's being pushed off as a, as a thing that only low class people do. And it shouldn't be that way. Number three is um, it's just not fast enough. So light rail, it's good. It's good for short term transit, but not for long term transit. So we need to one up it. We need to go to a faster solution. So this is not high speed rail. So a midterm, a midterm level solution is a 55 mile an hour, 60, 60 mile an hour kind of subway solution that you use to connect to the light rail as it goes on. So you use the light rail for your intermediary uh, halls. And then you might use, if you're living in the Phoenix Metro and you're just trying to get around, you use the subway system, which is basically above ground or not subway, but it's, it functions like a subway. And then if you need to go to other cities, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, T Tucson, you would use a high speed rail, which goes over 200 miles an hour. That's how you create the proper grid. But here's the thing. So how do you so how do you eliminate the number two problem, which is the fact that we need uh, that people, the working class, the people with the money aren't actually riding it. They need a class system. So you have economy, you have business class and then you have first class. And that way, the people who are riding first class are not right next to the people who are in the economy. So people who they do this in Italy, they do this in China. You go to Italy, for example, you ride the train. I talked about it. It's called the Italio. You ride the train from Florence to, say, Rome. And you sit in the business class. There's business people in there with their laptops, in their tuxedos. They will be getting off the train in, in Rome to go to their business meetings. There is an economy version where people who, who are not sitting in business sit. And they ride it and they use it because it's fast, it's efficient, and it works. That's why. Wow, lots of comments. I got a lot of stuff to catch up on here. Are there big hairy spiders on the freeway, on the highways? That I do not know. Um, I have seen road reflectors that are red, red to show the direction of those lanes and are the opposite direction. Maybe that could help the wrong way drivers. Yes, I mean, having some sort of indicator like even the lights that's, that, that, you know, if you're going in the opposite direction, so the lights wouldn't blink at you red if you were going in the right direction because the other side of the pole, there's no lights. But if you're on the wrong side of the pole, it blinks at you red, right? So red blinking lights that face the direction you're not supposed to be going. So if you're supposed to be going this way, the lights would be facing you This the, for the drivers coming this way. So that's something to do. Uh, you know, you have to take into consideration most of the people who are going in the wrong direction, these wrong way drivers, they're people who are, like I said, under the intoxication of not just alcohol, but also pharmaceuticals that many people are now taking. So, I mean, it's, it's more than just blaming the bars. It's like, what are you going to do about the person who's on Percocet trying to drive? What are you going to do about the person who got the midnight snacks, but they took their Percocet two hours ago, stuff like that. The Metro uh, is written by business people from the suburbs and the CTA LR rode by everyone from low class to lawyers to wealthy. In fact, they encourage people to use it to go to the loop. Where is this Peter Brown? Trevor Osu says eliminate number two by giving more stops. People in suits are always on the CTA train systems. It's not that trust me more stops. So you're saying that the, the rail needs to stop more. 
But the thing is, you don't want a rail that's constantly stopping, right? Because that's going to slow the thing down. So you need these you need these faster rails to run parallel or to run per, to run alongside these light rails. So light rails go slow, but they get you they get you faster than walking from point A to point B. Yeah, sure, they could have more, but you need a faster rail. Like you need a subway system, like what they have in BART. It goes above ground, underground. You could do above ground and underground here in Arizona, but we need we need that. But at the end of the day, guys, I'm really fighting for the uh, high speed solution, high speed rail, uh, because you know I think that's just a better way than flying, and it'll connect America in a way that we've never been connected. It's it's just like when I was living in Hawaii. This is how I this is how I got a kind of a hunch. See, they always mask it, so they come out that the, the lobbyists come out saying. It's a money pit. It's not going to work. It's a terrible idea. It's horrible. Okay? That's what they do. But then you find out that behind it all was lobbyists who were trying to create this narrative or the, promote their agenda that benefits them, and people buy into it because they're like, yeah, see, they know what they're talking about because I read it there. And then you discover, oh, wow, there's more to it. Okay? So in Hawaii, they had a ferry system. They still have ferries, by the way, in Hawaii. They still have... Pride of America, it's this big, giant cruise ship. In fact, it's the largest cruise ship in all of uh, America, it's called the Pride of America by Norwegian. Okay, but they used to have an inter-island ferry that would take you from Oahu to the Big Island, Big Island to Maui. They, they did away with it because they said it was killing the coral reef. Now, if that was really the case, why would they have barges that are constantly dropping off uh, produce? Whether How do you think uh, the Walmart gets its uh, its furniture and, and all of its stuff. It comes in on a barge, right? How do you think um, the food gets to the islands? But who was it though? Who was taking who was taking the biggest hit? The airlines. People were no longer using the airlines because all they had to do was stand in line, board the ferry and go for 45 minutes to Maui instead of stand in line, go through to at TSA, do all this and that. So the airlines were getting hit really hard. So they had to come up with something. And what was it? It's killing the coral reefs. Guess what? The coral reefs in Hawaii are still dying and the ferry's not there. So they're opportunistic. You have to keep in mind, that's how they play it. They look for the opportunity. It's kind of like what they do with the, the climate change. Climate change is happening. There's no doubt about it. Climate change has always happened. In fact, if you look at the ice age, we came out of the ice age, right? Okay. So ice ages came, ice ages go. We might go back into an ice age. But in the meantime, we might have global warming, global cooling, more crazy weather patterns. This is not the first time we've had crazy weather in the history of the earth. Go go look at all sorts of different documentations from Babylon to Egypt to Sodom and Gomorrah, all the way through till whatever you want to look up, Pompeii. I mean, whatever. what's the natural disaster that you're saying is being caused by man-made? Here's another thing that you have to keep in mind about climate change. The... Uh, what do plants need to survive? CO2. So if there's more CO2 in the air, wouldn't that benefit plants? Now, obviously, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm just looking at it for like, I'm saying, yes, mankind is doing damage to the, to the rivers. Mankind is doing damage to the environment and nobody likes that. That's not good. No one likes to look at a littered uh, uh, place, right? But what we're saying is we're also we're also very aware of the fact that there's people out there who are capitalizing on the opportunity to tell people a certain story. And that's what we're on the lookout for. And with this rail stuff, that's what we're seeing. OK, so Daniel says too hot for subways underground and above ground. There is no system. OK, Dubai has a rail system. It is a very hot place. In fact, Dubai is hotter than Phoenix. Actually, Singapore is hotter than Phoenix, in my opinion, and uh, Dubai is all above ground, no underground subways. Singapore is underground and it does have subways. And inside of every single uh, terminal where they have a stop, it is an air conditioned environment. Now, if you're sitting on top in a station, like in Dubai, they only have, they have, a, they have the air conditioned uh, booth right there, right? It's maybe, I don't know, maybe 50 yards to 100 yards. But it's air conditioned. You know, you, you step right back out into the Dubai heat and you're like, oh, man, it's hot. OK, but Singapore, it goes underground, way deep underground. I'm not I'm not so sure Phoenix would be able to do a subway, but um, there is ways around it and air conditioners work. 
And so uh, I, I agree, though. You know, you would have to take that into consideration when you're building the subway. 55 people watching, 37 up likes. Thank you to everybody who's been up liking this video and commenting in on this uh, subject of uh, what we call the, you know, the, the Phoenix transportation of the future, right? It's, it's the conundrum. Every city has the disastrous um, uh, transportation system, especially as these cities become more and more populated. It just becomes more and more of an issue, but the future is ours, right? We, we can, we can, we can affect the, the results of the future. Uh, if, if just imagine if people said, no, there's no way we can fly. There's no way. There's no way. Fl flying is impossible. Don't tell the Wright brothers that because they figured out a way to fly. And then the next thing you know, we're flying, you know, commercial airliners to Hawaii. And now we do it. You know, the, remember the first intercontinental flight between uh, America and Hawaii? That was a big deal. Uh, imagine the first flight from New York to, to London. That, that just shaved off 17 days of transit. Right. So it's a big deal. But I'm saying to say that it can't be done, I think is not the uh, the most efficient way to get big things, great things to happen. And I think transportation can be reimagined and it can be done. And the answer will never be, it can't be done. Because if we always say it can't be done, then we might as well just pack things up and just call it a day. Because, <laughs> I mean, great things don't happen by pessimists. What do they say? Uh, uh, they never built statues of pessimists. So you don't see great pessimists going down in history with statues, right? Who was... Who gets statues? Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Aristotle, um, Socrates, you know, Galileo. So we've got to be able to really think about this and not just say that, oh, automobiles, Phoenix is just an automobile city. We're not going to have anything other than automobiles and buses. And that's just all she wrote. Yes, it's going to cost money. It's going to cost all members of society that are having to pay, whether it be in a sales tax or some sort of tax. I realize that and taxes aren't fun, but it's an investment in our future. It's an investment in the future. Build it, build it now. Okay. And, and I'm saying because it's a matter of safety, efficiency, and some of you would say environmental uh, importance. Thank you, Robert. You agree with me. Thank you. Uh, it does sound like BART for Phoenix. It's a popular choice for people working in the city. Private helicopter rides for all citizens. Well, there you go. Then you have an interesting subject. Thank you, uh, Adam, for bringing that up because you have what Uber is working on, flying cars. You know, the Jetsons, that might be a reality coming soon. I don't know how, I don't know how they'll do that. With, you know, how, how are you going to have thousands or maybe even more of those Jetson-type vehicles in the sky? That's crazy. That's crazy to me. I like uh, Elon Musk's solution of Hyperloop, but that's tunnel boring and stuff like that. But again, things can be, uh, humanity can work at an amazing pace and amazing things can be done really quickly if you get people in harmony with the system. And it's just like the, the factory line. How did Ford go from producing 500 cars to 1,000 cars to, to all almost everyone getting behind the wheel of a car by the 50s? I mean, that was the assembly line. Assembly line was a technology in a way, even though it was a, it wasn't a technology per se, but it was a technology, an engineering technology of thought. And so that's what I'm trying to encourage here is engineering thought. It's a technology that can work, reimagining. And that's why guys like Elon Musk are so revered by people in this day and age, because he's not just saying it can't be done. So what is his solution? Hyperloop, which is not rails. It's basically air suction. So it's not running off any real combustible fuel that I know of, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Hyperloop is going to be um, working off of suction. So that's amazing. And it goes super fast. They're building it in Los Angeles right now. Uh, Peter Brown says, yes, we have the tech to do it. And, and, and that's the thing, but why are we not, why are we holding up that tech? And it's because I think in my opinion, these lobbyists, because why would you not, why would you not be for something that could greatly uh, benefit Phoenix. I mean, to say that it's not going to work. Well, if you build it and you build a really crappy design of it, it's not people aren't going to use it and it's not going to work. But if you build something really quality, people will use it. So it's 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 like um, yeah, it's, it's it's really that simple. You got to build things that people want to use. And if you if you build something that doesn't work, people won't use it. How do we know it works? Well, look how many countries all around the world. 
people use rail. Like I said, Europe, go to Europe, you're taking trains. You, many people would prefer to take the train over the Autobahn, which is about as fast as you can go on any freeway, any highway system in, on Earth. China, rail. People prefer to ride these things. Not everybody, okay? Even if you can get 25% of people off the roads and on these public transportation solutions, like rail, it's a win. Oil companies, there you go. That's what I'm saying, Adam. It's the... There's so somewhere if you if you pull the mask back, you discover there's some oil companies that are behind all this. Petroleum is a huge industry, huge. I mean, uh, right now, actually, to be honest, just just to give you a little bit of stats, as of 2019, United States is now the number one oil producer in the whole world. You know, and and it didn't used to be like that. Saudi Arabia, Russia, Russia actually used to be one of the largest oil producers. They're no longer that. Um, but the United States, one of the ways that we started getting more oil, even though, you know, the Middle East sits on massive oil reserves, right? There's oil pools underneath the Middle East. And uh, the way we did it th was through a technology called oil shell fracking. So fr through fracking technology, we were able to get more oil out of uh, places that weren't producing oil. So now we're the number one producer because of technology. All right, so we got 42 people who smashed up the likes. Thank you to everyone who smashed up the likes, and let's check out some more of the comments. Joni in California says, I agree, Jeff. The Swedish proposed a monorail system in California way back, but we, of course, rejected it. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, you'll hear a lot of the masses who will also reject great technological advancements like that inside of America, echoing what their lobbyists have already planted in their head because they're just regurgitating the same phrase over and over. It's going to cost more money and it's not going to work. If it, that's basically the, the two things they keep putting out for us, right? Peter Brown says, I take the train to my downtown Chicago office, 35 minutes compared to 45 minutes to 60 minutes driving and $30 to park. When I take the train, $2 to park and $5 on the train. Thank you for sharing that information. So it's faster and more affordable. Sounds like the Chicago mass transit system is working. OK, so if you look at the Arizona railways that we have right now, uh, we don't really have much, but we have the BNSF uh, Class 1 railway. Passenger railways include, uh, we also have Union Pacific. You have Amtrak, Southwest Chief, Sunset Limited, Texas Eagle. Valley Metro Rail, Tempe Streetcar, Sunlink, Old Pueblo Trolley. Who knows where the Old Pueblo is? Anyone want to comment? Right below where the old Pueblo is. Who has the nickname Old Pueblo? Um, let's see. Someone said by Linda. Who's who's Linda, George? Don't you have light rail in Phoenix? You need to remember this stuff ends up being a loser. We do have we do have light rail and it starts in Mesa and it ends all the way in like right when it gets to uh, Glendale thereabouts. A lot of people with the, the people with the money. The, the working class are not riding the rail. And we went over that, uh, those three things earlier in the video, the three reasons why people are not riding that. Yes, Jan, Jan got it right. It is Tucson. The old Pueblo, for those of you who don't know, that's the nickname of Phoenix or uh, Tucson, old Pueblo. So, um, yeah, we went over those three reasons. People don't, people don't ride the rail. It's, uh, it's not fast. It's not efficient. It's, it's, it's too far away. And so um, it has nothing to do with the price, but it, the, the people on it, uh, you know, it's hard, it's hard to be a mother riding the Phoenix Metro. It really is uh, because the people on there are intimidating. How do I know? I mean, me, I'll go on the rail and I have people asking me, Hey, you want to buy this drill? I had some guy trying to sell me a Makita handsaw. I'm like, dude, why do I want to buy a Makita handsaw? He's like, bro, it works. I'm like, no, thanks. He's like three bucks. I'm like, no, I don't need your Makita handsaw. He's like, two bucks. I was like, dude, you need two bucks? Here's two bucks. Stop annoying me. Because <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm not going to carry around. I'm not going to just pay you two bucks to carry around a Makita handsaw. I already have a Makita handsaw at my house. But the guy just was really, uh, you know, trying to sell me something. Uh, and, and that was just one person because the other guy was just waiting to see if I'd say yeah and try and sell me something too. Now, why would people want to be exposed to that every single day when they go on to ride the rail? So they've got to fix that and that can be done. Okay. 
But uh, saying it can't be done is, is not going to work. Same reason we don't have all the electric cars already. There would be no combustible cars on the road if not for the oil companies. I mean, there you go. The oil companies right there. They, they, uh, they got lobbyists. They pay a lot of money to make sure things stay healthy in their uh, industry. They lost 25% of their sales because America decided to build a metro system over the next 10 to 15 years as part of an urban renewal or an infrastructure renewal program. Oh my gosh, the, the oil industries would be upside down. I saw your video on the light rail in Phoenix. It looks slow and just not efficient, but it is air conditioned, I will say that. And it is slow, but they need, but so we don't need less rail, we need more rail and we need faster rail solutions. That's, that's, that's at the end of the day, what we're all, uh, we should all be uh, fighting for. So we, we also talked about in this video, if you're just now joining, we talked about uh, wrong way drivers, that's a big thing. We talked about Prop 105, Prop 106, which is basically in place. If you don't know, look up Prop 105, August 27th. They're putting it out there. I had someone from the rail industry actually contact me, asking me to tell you guys about Prop 105. That's not the reason for this video, but I decided to include it in this video, that this guy was saying that there is a Proposition 105 where they're gonna try and shoot down any more funding for any more rail. I have my opinion. He did not influence my uh, my opinion. He saw one of my other videos and he said, I see you like rail. I said, yes, I do. Remember that it takes coal, nuclear fuel power plants to power these trains as well as provide the power to charge the electric cars. Yes, that is a good point because as you, as you take from another fuel source, you have to create another fuel so source, which will more than likely create an equal sometimes more, sometimes less use case, right? So it has to be used. So uh, for example, lithium batteries, in order to get more uh, lithium batteries for cars or for Tesla batteries or whatever, what's that mean? We've got to create more lithium mines, which is going to be just like a fracking facility for the uh, pipelines. And I'm not against, I'm, it's not like I'm against automobiles. Okay, I still have my automobile and I still intend to keep my automobile. I just don't want to have to drive it as much. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, nothing is free. Tesla free energy is coming. Uh, okay, says Janin. Interesting. That'd be interesting. Um, so let's see. Look on Google Earth and you'll see the oil drilling. I was amazed. Where, Deanna? Where's this oil drilling taking place? Peter Bill says, in Denver, the light rail is faster than sitting in traffic. I know a lot of people that don't own vehicles. That's pretty good, Peter Bill. Like Portland, they have the red line, blue line, yellow line, orange, green, and streetcars in the south and east. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. All this, almost every city in America that has, that's a big city. Like, is Phoenix the only city, is Phoenix Urban Planners planning to be the only city in America without a light rail or, or a efficient rail system? Seriously, name a city that's in the top 10, okay, in population that doesn't have an effect, efficient uh, rail system. I mean, we've got Seattle, we just talked about that. I guess we could say uh, metropolitan area cities. Okay, so number one is what, New York? They have rail, right? You go to New York, you know you could catch a train all around New York. Number two, uh, Los Angeles, you know you could catch trains, they got the coaster, they got the Amtrak, they've got uh, rails. Not necessarily the safest thing in Los Angeles to do, but they have one, okay? Uh, what's number three? Chicago. Chicago has a rail. We've been talking about that on the whole on, on this video. Uh, Houston. Does Houston and Dallas have one? I haven't really been to Houston and Dallas recently to see if they've got one. But Phoenix Transit. OK, so Ben says Phoenix Transit sucks. I was fortunate to live 15 minutes from the light rail on foot in Tempe. But now I'm in Scottsdale and I have to take the bus to get to the light rail station adding time. Yeah, I mean, it, it, just a little bit more efficiency and, and careful planning can really solve these issues. It's not doing it because Jeff wants to have it done as an individual because he wants to make his little life better. It's for the greater good. That's the whole point. It's for the greater good. Island B. Uh, yeah, Island B said, we need more nuclear power plants. 
There's no combustion in that nuclear energy is clean energy. It really is, except for uh, in the case of Fukushima Daiichi. And, uh, you know, that that was, that, you know, that we, we saw that with Fukushima and we saw that with Chernobyl. But just because that's just like saying because an airplane crashes, we shouldn't fly anymore. No, airplanes crash. What happens? NTSA, FS, uh, FAA come in and what do they do? They investigate and they try to solve the problem to create more safer transport. So you don't just give up. I mean, that that you could say that about um, what happened with the Isma or uh, the, the Valdez oil tanker that that uh, up in Alaska. Remember back in the 80s or the 90s when the Valdez oil tanker uh, happened? That didn't stop them from using oil. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, and I only say that island because people have said that, uh, you know, nuclear is not a good solution because it's dangerous, you know especially in Japan, they just do not like nuclear anything. I mean, they don't even, they didn't even like our nuclear aircraft carriers when we would pull in, they would protest nuclear aircraft carriers because obvious reasons. If you don't know about what happened, you know, with nuclear anything in Japan, then uh, we'll, we'll, you know, look it up. <laughs> but I mean, they have a good reason not to like nuclear, but uh, the fact that recently they had the Fukushima Daiichi meltdown and then you had Chernobyl. But I think, uh, you learn from your past mistakes. And at the end of the day, nuclear energy is cleaner than coal. It's cleaner than uh, any other sort of uh, energy. I mean, it's even more, it's even more efficient in my opinion than solar, because in order to crank out that much solar power, you have to create these massive radiating microwaves that are basically positioned in death Valley. Like I've seen it, they have these big, huge solar fields. And they're huge. They take up so much land. It's just like the wind turbines. And they don't produce a lot of energy. But nuclear, it's a big facility. But the amount of energy that it produces is un unbelievable. It's crazy. I mean, you have two sources to uh, uranium and rich, or, uh, uh, nuclear, right? Plutonium and uranium. Yeah, it, it, to, yeah, it's it's you have it's yeah we have to be careful because like Island B said, nuclear power is often negative association with nuclear warhead. So, yes, you have nuclear weapons which create a massive detonation because of the power that comes, the pack of power that comes from uh, a nuclear warhead. But as far as an energy source, it's very uh, useful. The big city is installing a streetcar that will connect the curved section of Apache to downtown and the Apache Boulevard light rail stations. Okay, so Ben's saying that they're gonna build a streetcar in Apache Junction. Cool. Depends on the age of the car. Brand new cars do cost more to register. However, after five years, so the registration starts to drop dramatically, says Derek. You're talking about, oh, Tim said, compared to California, anyone know if car insurance and car registration is more expensive in Phoenix. Yeah, it's pretty expensive in California. It's pretty expensive in Arizona. I don't, I, 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 I back in the 2000s when I lived in California, uh, I was stationed there, as I said. So I had a choice, drive home to Arizona and pay uh, $210 to register my Chevy S10, which I had at the time, or pay $310 in California. That was back when $100 felt like it was worth a lot to me then. I mean, it still is worth a lot of money. I mean, I don't take money, you know, I don't take it for granted, but $310 for, uh, I remember I, I used to say, oh, I'll just register my car when I go back down to Phoenix. So I think it's a little bit more affordable in Arizona than it is in California. Not, not much cheaper though. Still pretty expensive, believe it or not, for registering your vehicle. Nuclear energy is how the sun creates energy and also what allows plants. Because what we're basically talking about when we're saying nuclear is atomic, right? Uh, and, and by definition, atomic energy is basically the most atoms, right, that, that create uh, that energy source. Okay, so creates energy and allows plants to photosynthesize and creates energy, which gets turned into oil over millions of years. Why not just create nuclear power plants? Says Zuniga. That's a good. That's a that's a fair point. I think that's a fair point. Um, car insurance has me a little worried too. Okay, yeah, it, it, car insurance. Uh, it's higher than I thought, actually. It, and and again, it's it's. You know why car insurance is expensive in Arizona? 
because it's actually there's a lot of accidents that happen out here. People spend so much time in their car. It's like if you're an insurance company uh, insuring someone in Arizona, they're the odds of them getting into a fender bender at some point are pretty high. Literally everyone. I've been in an accident. Um, yeah. Sometimes it, 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 it's not even your fault. What I'm saying is you could be at Walmart, you come out to your car and it's crushed up. Just this kind of stuff happens. I mean, I see it on the news. Just tune on, tune into the news. You'll see some of the most crazy things, not even to mention road rage. Road rage in Phoenix is pretty serious. There's that many people on the road and they, there's some hotheads. It, you, air, driving is one of the things that can turn a, a near saint like individual into almost appearing as though they are no longer saint worthy and they are a loose cannon ready to pop off. That happens with drivers. I've seen good people freak out behind the wheel. They shut down our nuclear power plant plants in California, says Joni. The Dolly Parton Memorial. Did they really shut down the nuclear power plant? I think they had one in uh, just south of Los Angeles. What was it called? Uh, oh, man. What, it was south of um, Dana Point. San Clemente? Was it the San Clemente nuclear power plant? Did they close that down? California registration is a joke. Newer cars and trucks can cost up to around 1000 a year. Well, if you got a new vehicle in uh, Arizona, you're getting close to $1,000 a year here, too. So uh, we might not be able to put them down too much. No, uh, it, he's making a joke about my $100 comment. Um, $100? Bucks, I mean, you give me $100 bucks to go to the um, casino, and I'll double it. I'll try. <laughs> if I lose it, I'll uh, don't don't uh, don't blame me. Are used cars cheaper? Yeah, I mean uh, it's hard to say. I mean Arizona is not driving in Arizona is expensive. It's straight up from everything from the insurance to the registration to buying the car to the amount of gas you're going to pay the whole thing. Again, people think they're paying more in taxes, but they're saving more in, in overall cost. If you really look at it, it's like. You're, you're, you're saving money on one end to, to uh, make to gain ground over here. And most of you guys, the amount of savings you would have from uh, an efficient public transportation system like uh, a grid of rail system. I mean, really think about it. I mean, <laughs> it, it'll pay it out. I mean, I don't I don't really think too, too many of us, even if every one of us ended up paying thirty dollars extra a month to fund a, an efficient rail system, you're still going to save it in the amount of areas where it, just in gas alone over the long term. It's kind of like uh, you guys know about the uh, solar solar panels on your house, right? So it, the, the deal is you get a rebate. So it costs about $30,000 to get the solar panels on your roof. And if you if you do the math, you know, you're like, wow, how many how many years is it going to take for me to uh, make my money back on that? And they say anywhere between five to 10 because you do get a tax a tax incentive right off. But one of the things they can do, which they're not doing, is where there's a system where you can actually sell your power. If you're if you're uh, let's say you, you become your own power plant because you produce enough power. Let's say you don't use as many kilowatts or uh, as much energy as as you need to, as many watts as you need to. You can take your excess and sell it back into the grid. So you should be able to make money as a mini conductor. But they haven't really made an efficient program. So what if you were able to put 15 uh, uh, panels on your roof, create enough power to sell that back into the grid? Well, who's again, who's going to lose from that? The power companies. Power companies don't want that to happen because then you don't need them. If that became a thing where you were where people were becoming their own power plants, selling power back into the grid for oh, things that they overproduce. That would become like an Uber type model for uh, energy production. And then you wouldn't need things like SRP or APS like you need them. You'll probably, they'll probably still be there or maybe they'll go out of business and someone will replace them. But, uh, you know, don't say that too loud because those guys, they got big money and they got big power lobbyists. Those guys are big. You guys remember Enron, smartest guys in the room. You guys ever seen that movie? about Enron, how they were doing California dirty. You guys saw that? Yes, yeah, so, that's right. Joni said San Onifer nuclear power plant, San Clemente. 
That's what it's called, San Onifer. That's a great place to go surfing. I know that. Okay, so Sick Mitch, will the Arizona heat ruin my paint on my car and cause more maintenance needs? So if that's that's a good question. Some things that people do to uh, offset the uh, paint problem is they wax it every six months, which is going to cost you 54 bucks, right? Get a Carnuba uh, hand wax or a buff or whatever, or park your car in the garage if you're really worried about it. But uh, nowadays they make a little bit better paint than they used to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, the sun is so bright, it, it affects everything. You get, it's called sun bleach. Your paint gets sun bleached. If you leave some things out long, too long, you get sun bleached. PG&E in California is finalizing its cheaper uh, chapter 11 status. I got a notice in the mail telling me I need to file for money owed soon. So PG&E, that's specific gas and electric going under. Okay. Didn't know that either. But I do know that San Clemente is wild. Inspire Me Studio. Happy Saturday, Jeff. Thanks for everything you do to inform us. Are there any companies in Arizona providing carpool days to help their employees save money and gas? Uh, there's a solution. I mean, that could uh, not that I know of. That's a good question. I did see recently and I posted in our group. Did you guys see the picture of the guy who was driving with a mannequin in the HOV lane in the carpool lane? So he had a uh, I posted that in the living in Arizona group. You have the HOV lane. You can't drive in there as one person. So you have to have two people to be carpooling. And that's a faster lane just in general. You know, you'll be, you, if you're driving all by yourself in the, on the freeway, you'll be in stop and go traffic and you'll look over to the right and, or is it to the right or to the left? It's to the left. You look over to the left and people are just whizzing right by you. And you're like, wow, I want to be them. They're in the, they're in the carpool lane. The dude had a mannequin, and he was like the fifth guy they caught recently. Um, there's an app for everything. Yeah, Adam, there really is an app for – there probably is an app for carpooling. I just recently did a DoorDash. Have you guys used DoorDash to order food? It's like ordering pizza, except they save all of your debit card information in there. So, you know, when you call them for pizza, they're like, what's your credit card number? You're like, blah, 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 blah. They're like, how much do you want to leave for a tip? Uh, uh, you know, and you're on the phone for like, I don't know, sometimes I've ordered pizza, been on the phone for five, 10 minutes. You, you open up this app, you order your food in a minute. When the person arrives, literally, you don't have, you, I mean, I'm, I, I was, you know, try, they're, they're in such a hurry because they're trying to make money because they're only making three or $4 off of your tip. So I tip them three or $4. I mean, I think they make money off the delivery costs too, but, uh, you know, they're always in a hurry to get to the next person to drop off. Maybe I should tip more. I was going to ask the girl tonight. I should say, how much, should, how, what's the average tip? But it said 20%. It said, do I want to tip 20%? So I hit 20%. That's why I always tip 20%. But um, yeah, I mean, that's an efficient system. I mean, I'm like, they got an app for everything nowadays. Booking, travel, all that. Speaking of travel, guys, you guys, if you haven't already subscribed to Island Hopper TV, I'm going to be doing some more stuff on there. Check it out. Island Hopper TV. I just posted a link right there. Island B. I know Island B knows me from Island Hopper TV. Or do you know me from Altcoin Buzz? I don't know. The Bitcoin channel. A date with Blow Up Betty. Do a lot of drive convertibles in Phoenix. Or do a lot of people drive convertibles in Phoenix? Or given the heat during summertime, are they not a good idea? You know six months out of the year, they're a pretty good, good car. I remember when I was in high school, I met my friend had a Sebring. Remember those Chrysler Sebrings? And everyone used to love the Sebring, but when it got hot, yeah, you, you, you closed the Sebring, but it's a convertible. So why not? I mean, yeah, convertibles, they could work on a beautiful day. I mean, we get plenty of beautiful days. It's just when it's 110 degrees, it's not really a beautiful day. Peter says, all right, 20% is generous. Yeah, but I mean, three or four bucks on a $15, $15 delivery. I was like, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 is that worth it for their gas? You know? Oh, okay. Island B knows me from all coin buzz. When Southern California first had their carpool lane on the 405 freeway years ago, and I was always in the news about drivers getting caught having mannequins in their passenger side. That is crazy. I never, I, I, 
I mean, it might have crossed my mind that someone could do that, but I never really thought to do that myself. But people must be like, like you must have had to have been really pissed. People had to have been really pissed off in stop and go traffic watching the HLV lane just keep breezing on down to just be like, you know what? I need to find a solution and I'm gonna I'm gonna do whatever it takes, even if it means getting a blow up doll. <laughs> oh man, that is just crazy. I remember that Inspire Me Studio also pregnant women would try to get away with that. Oh, really? Pregnant women? Pregnant women are, they're a little bit more special than, yeah. If a woman's pregnant, she, women, pregnant women, uh, they deserve, in my opinion, special treatment. It's easy for a guy to say, oh, no, pregnant women don't deserve special treatment. They, they're just equal like the rest of us, but... Uh, come on now. Can you split lanes on a bike in Arizona? Split lanes? That's a good question. You're talking about a motorcycle. Yeah, man, they're mofo games, man. They were talking about blow up dolls in the passenger seat so you can drive in a carpool lane. 56 people have smashed up the likes. What is this on my hat here? It's a Bitcoin hat. Uh, 56 people smashed up the likes. If you're new here and you haven't smashed up the likes, do so, please. If you're coming and say Peoria or Chandler Gilbert and going to Phoenix, how bad is the commute rush hour traffic around Phoenix? If you're coming from Peoria or Chandler Gilbert, two totally different areas, right? Peoria is way up in Northwest, Chandler and Gilbert Southeast. But uh, you're saying which one's gonna have better traffic? I think better traffic is going to be on the Southeast Valley because if you're coming from Peoria, the only, well, actually, what time are you talking, right? Um, because there's two rush hours, right? There's the evening rush hour and the morning rush hour. Uh, Peoria usually takes the 101. The 101 in the West Side is pretty dang good traffic. I don't, I don't ever really remember being in too heavy a traffic on the West Side of Phoenix, but where it really gets heavy is around the 101 from I-10 and the 101 stack, 202, that whole area around Tempe. So from Tempe north to Scottsdale is packed, man. And then from Tempe all the way towards about 45th Avenue, I-10, packed. That's why that whole building the 202 around South Mountain, the South Mountain Freeway, is supposed to alleviate a lot of that uh, – a lot of that congestion that's that exists there. Blake Nash says, I like the West Valley traffic. The 101 is much smoother than East Valley coming into 202 to 10. See, so he's he's telling you uh, that the uh, 101 is much smoother than in the East Valley. So yeah, at first I had to think about that, but when I, I was for some reason forget, I was thinking that Peoria people had to take I-10 or Grand Avenue, but, I, but then it, I remembered, I was like, no, there's 101. <laughs> So yeah, the one on one is great out there in the West Valley, honestly. So, and answer to that is one on one. What you would do for the one on one, depending on where you work, you could take the one on one to State Route fifty one, which does get traffic. SR fifty one does get clogged. Uh, they used to call it the Squaw Peak Freeway. Now it's called the, uh, you know, we just call it the SR fifty one State Route fifty one. And you catch up with State Route fifty one, I think around about twentieth Street. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. 101 is good. 101 is good on the West Valley, but on the east side, Scottsdale area, 101 is something's going on with that, especially northbound at five o'clock. Northbound five o'clock on the on the 101, it gets pretty uh congested. How bad is traffic from Santan Valley to Chandler during rush hour? This whole area out here in the Southeast Valley, Queen Creek, Santan Valley, it seems like even in a year, the amount of cars that are on the road, it just keeps going up. Every every month that goes by, I feel like more cars go. I remember when I first really noticed a, a bump in cars on the road was when the snowbirds came back. Because in this area of Phoenix, we get a lot of people from Canada. That's why if you go to Mesa uh, Gateway International Airport, you'll see that they fly to a lot of Canadian destinations and destinations where LDS members are. So it's like there's like this stronghold. Of, um, this is a this is a LDS stronghold. LDS is people who are members of the uh, Latter-day Saints, the church, the, the Mormon church. And so most of the people in the Southeast Valley, you'll come to find out after getting to talk to them, 
they're actually from the LDS. And uh, so you'll notice that the airlines fly out of there and the LDS, especially the older ones, they go out of town during the summer. They don't mess with the summer heat, but man, right when, the, right when uh, about Halloween comes around, they start coming back and you just start seeing more and more cars on the road. But here's the thing. I, it's summertime right now and there's a lot of cars on the road out here. So the, the reason there's no simple answer for it is because more people keep moving out here. I've always said this 10 to 15 new U-Hauls a week. That means 10 to 15 new homes are getting moved into a week just in the vicinity of Santan Valley that I'm in. That's not even including the other uh, vicinity. So times 52 and then you add in the uh, snowbirds that are going to come back. Ugh. I don't know. I'm not looking forward to it. They need to start th seriously considering building some more freeways. Here you go. Mofo's games. I work all over the, the valley and west side traffic and by Sky Harbor Airport is the worst. That is true. Central Phoenix traffic. If you can avoid working there, if you can avoid living there, I recommend it. The only time I go to Central Phoenix is either if I'm going to the airport or I'm going to a Diamondbacks game or Phoenix Suns game. So now you see why I say we need to <laughs> take the Suns and take the Diamondbacks out of downtown and put them in Tempe in the Southeast Valley. What do you guys think of that? That's why I don't want them in downtown because going to downtown is it's already too congested. But then again, downtown Phoenix is very fragile. Like if they if they took those two things away, I mean, what else would it be able to sustain downtown? They're trying to build up downtown to be a thing. So if they remove the sports teams, that's all there was downtown for a long time was just the sports teams. Oh, yeah. No, Arizona traffic is not as bad as California. That's for damn sure. Do the roads get flooded during monsoons? I haven't seen much floods out here during the monsoons. I mean, we got two or three heavy rains that I would say were just nice. That's the only word I could use was nice. My backyard needed it. As a matter of fact, I was it was cloudy most of the day today, uh, probably about 102 with over, over overcast skies from probably 2 in the afternoon uh, all the way through to the evening. And I was I thought I saw storm clouds brewing over the superstitions, but nothing. We haven't had a storm in five days. But, I mean, yeah, you will get flash floods for sure in a really strong storm especially one that's flooding upstream up on the mountains. If, if they get a big uh, torrential rain up on the mountains, like those washes, you know, the water runs downhill, right? And it ends up in a wash. You can get that. But down here in Santan Valley or Queen Creek, I, I, I mean, we do, they, why do you think they call it Queen Creek, right? Because we got a creek. It's a creek. <laughs> uh, but I've never seen any water in the dried up Queen Creek. Not once. Arizona Suns. I can't be Phoenix Suns anymore. It can't be Phoenix Suns anymore. I mean, they, they, they've they already changed the Coyotes. They've changed the Arizona Cardinals. Because if you didn't know this, the Arizona Cardinals used to be called the Phoenix Cardinals. Back when older Bill Bidwell. <laughs> See, the Suns right now, we have a problem. The owner, his name is Robert Sarver. He is hated as much as Bill Bidwell used to be hated. So Michael Bidwell, who inherited the Cardinals uh, front end or the management of the Cardinals, his dad, Bill, Bill Bidwell, the, Car the Cardinals were the, the basement dwellers of the uh, NFL for a long time. Then we had Jake the Snake come along, Jake Plummer, you know, Jake the Snake. Uh, Plummer, Plummer was Arizona State boy. He, he, he led us to an eight and eight season and we beat the Cowboys in round one. And that was like the biggest deal ever. And we did that once. But then uh, Michael Bidwell takes over, and then this man by the name of Kurt Warner comes to town. <laughs> and Kurt Warner changed the whole game. Well, it used to be the Suns were the big ticket in town when Jerry Colangelo was the owner. But then he sold to this dude named Robert Sarver. And Phoenix hates the guy, literally. I mean, you just go on the Phoenix Suns Instagram and you just look at all the comments uh, they're constantly bashing Sarver. The local media bashes Sarver. And if this guy doesn't like figure it out, I mean, they're just going to say, Phoenix Suns, you got to leave. We, we, we need a team. We need a, we need a team that's going to win or he's got to sell, but he won't sell. He don't want to sell, even though he can't produce a winner. 
kind of like what happened with Bidwell. But Michael Bidwell does a good job, I think, uh, for sure. And Colangelo was, I mean, he's great. We need, we need, Colangelo, Colangelo also was part owner of the Diamondbacks when the Diamondbacks won the World Series. So there's a little bit of sports history for you from Arizona. Colangelo, he's like, he's like a hero out here. Go Raiders. Raiders are moving to Las Vegas. They got a beautiful stadium. I want to go see that new stadium. Suns Arena is old. I remember when it used to be called America West Arena. It was probably one of the best environments to watch a basketball game. That was back in, you know, the 90s. Uh, you know, because time goes by fast, especially as you get older, right? Nowadays, going to a game at uh, America West Arena or was it Talking Stick Arena now? Jeez, they keep changing. It was American Airlines Arena. Now it's Talking Stick. I just know of it as America West. That's what it was called. But America West doesn't exist anymore. But anyway, uh, go Packers. That's what uh, Peter Brown says. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix is one of the places or Arizona is one of those places you can go to a football game and pull for the other team and not get too beat up. <laughs> like, you try to be a Cardinals fan or a, another team fan in the Bay Area where the Raiders or the Niners play, not a good idea. Don't do it in Los Angeles either. I mean – those are some – I don't even think those are safe environments to go watch ball games. <laughs> like you, you, you should just not even go to Los Angeles or San Francisco or Oakland ball games if you're pulling for the other team. Just a bad idea. Literally not safe. Um, Card's got something going at least with Derek, uh, Derek Johnson – or D. Johnson, David Johnson, right? And rookie first rounder. Yeah, we got uh, Kyler Murray. So the Cardinals drafted Kyler Murray. We traded Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen – is like to me, I thought he was like he reminds me a lot of Ben Roethlisberger, and uh, he's got a cannon, but he didn't do too good last year because we had a terrible offensive line. But we had we still had DJ, we still had Larry, we still had uh, you know we should have we should have got it done, but our offensive line just didn't let the the rookie mature. Now he's on Miami, and we've got Kyler Kyler Murray, who's uh, the shortest quarterback in the NFL right now, so. When I was in Phoenix in Vegas was the best ever. It was better than LA and Bay area. And in Vegas, the Raiders stadium is not too shabby. That's right, man. Ken Ray Russell said that. Um, Rosen reminds me of Jay Cutler. Does he remind you of Jay Cutler? No, you think he's that soft? <laughs> I'm sorry. Jay Cutler was the only guy I've ever seen who uh, during the playoffs decided to sit the bench. The only other time I saw that was in a national championship game. And Colt McCoy did that. And they still drafted Colt McCoy high. How are you going to be in the national championship game and not have enough uh, energy in the tank to put your butt on the line and get the job done? I saw that Jay Cutler was one of the only guys I ever seen quit in the playoffs. I mean, you got Big Ben. Big Ben goes in the big. I've seen Big Ben Brothersburger get injured many times. Go in the locker room, come back out and get it done. Same with Tony Romo. I've seen Tony Romo do that same thing. When I see a when I see a guy do what Cutler did or what Colt McCoy did, that's a big red flag. And you're saying you think that uh, or Josh Rosen reminds you of Cutler, or are you saying in the fact that in the sense that he's got a gun like Jay Cutler because Jay Cutler did have a gun. Jay Cutler could throw hard. I actually wanted the Cardinals to draft Jay Cutler that year, but they drafted uh, Matt Liner. Don't even get me started. That guy used to throw. <laughs> he used to throw like floaters. He he's a lefty. He would just float it up there. And it, it, that ball would hang in the air for so long, and he would just get intercepted. But I remember the first time they brought in Kurt Warner to replace Liner because uh, Warner Warner was injured, so Liner took his place. And then they thought Liner, because he was a first-round draft pick that they paid a lot of money to, was going to have to be the quarterback. So the first few games, you know, we're, we're kind of get, barely getting by with Liner. And then I remember, like, one snap, all of a sudden – just a rocket came out of the quarterback for Arizona and it was a righty. And I'm like, what? I was like, you know, because sometimes when you're watching football, you might be drunk or drinking, whatever, you know, that's what, that's, that's, that's the thing I used to do back then when, you know, that was the 2006, right? 2000, no, 2005, probably yeah, maybe 2007. I don't remember the exact year, but uh, I saw, man, I saw that bullet come out of the quarterback and I was like, that ain't Matt Liner. That's Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner could, Dude, Kurt Warner. I'm a big Kurt Warner fan. I'm a big Kurt Warner fan. Cutler was awful, terrible leader, and threw a lot of picks. Yeah, dude, Kurt, uh, Jay Cutler 
is you really th- who said that? I, and by the way, I'm not trying to call you out. I think that's good that you said that. I just want to know why did you say that uh, Jay Cutler reminds you of Josh Rosen? And Josh Rosen is on the um, Dolphins now. So Rosen reminds me of Rex Grossman. Yuck. Cutler didn't quit in the NFC Championship in 2010. He tore his ACL. Packers beat him. It was awesome. Oh, was it a serious injury like that, Peter? Okay. I mean, Peter, I, I I apologize if it was that serious. I just remember Jay Cutler just didn't seem to be uh, the Iron Man that Tony Romo was or even Kurt Warner or – I don't know. And, and what did Jay Cutler ever do? I mean, he never won many games. Not to say that Romo won too many games, but Romo, Romo at least one year had the highest quarterback rating. Yeah, I am actually looking forward to the Arizona Cardinals starting up. Uh, we're in mini camp, training camp. I'm looking forward to it. I'm a big Cardinals fan. I am. It's just last year was really hard to get behind them. I mean, Arizona sports has just been terrible. Like this year, I tried to get behind the Diamondbacks. They're not out of it, but, um, you know, they're just around about 500. Um, but we have, I mean, I think our best team is hockey, and I'm not a big hockey guy, but. I'm looking forward to Arizona Cardinals uh, getting it done. I'm looking forward to seeing what Kyler Murray has. I don't like how they give up on uh, Rosen so easy, so I hope they don't do the same thing to Kyler Murray unless they have good reason to give up on him. But, you know, you can't, he's, he's, he's a rookie. You can't – not everyone's going to be able to do what Danger Russ did, right? Uh, Danger Russ being uh, Russell Wilson up in Seattle. He he came in and he was, he was ready to light it up. That's what they think is uh, – Kyler is going to be like uh, Russell Wilson. Oh, Buda Baker. Oh, man. I can't stop staring at who? Um, Warner had a great deep ball, says Sick Mets. Um, Romo is much better than Cutler. Come on now. That's what I said. I said Romo, man. I'm a, uh, and by the way, I, I have no problem debating football and you guys having uh, – uh, that That was my, my thing was I would always – my buddy, he's from uh, Atlanta, so he's an ATL boy. I was an AZ boy. We were both stationed in um, uh, California, and we would go back and forth about all sports. And that's how we became best friends, by just going back and forth rapping about sports. So um, I can do that all day long, but because this is Arizona channel, I'm only doing it now because we've been going on for an hour and seven minutes. Oh, hey, uh, welcome to the live feed from the United Kingdom, UK. Los Angeles Rams, woohoo. They're good, man. They they did good. I mean, they, except for in the Super Bowl. <laughs> what happened in the Super Bowl to both teams? Russell Wilson was drafted number 75, just signed uh, – was Russell Wilson drafted number 75? I thought he was drafted in the second round. I know he came from – let me see. Was Russell Wilson really drafted number 75? Okay, now you got me uh, checking this. I don't even know. I, I have to research that. It's it's not coming up immediately. Um, okay. Okay. Let's just go fishing. There you go. Was referring to Cutler and Rosen comparison comparison as far as they both have world of talent but poor leadership. Oh, okay. Carl Herndon, I got you. I, I see what you're saying. So so you're you're thinking that uh, – uh, yeah, I noticed – like this is the thing that I did notice about Josh Rosen was when he was traded, the first thing he did was unfollow all of his Cardinals teammates. Like I was, I was like, that's weak, dude. How are you going to be like that fair weather to just unfollow all your Cardinals teammates? But I didn't want to judge him because maybe he was sad that he was leaving. But even then I was like, so if he's so quick to unfollow all of his Cardinals teammates, including Larry, or I thought he unfollowed Larry, but if he was so quick to do that, I mean, that just shows you that maybe he wasn't really a, a great leader because you don't just abandon your team just like that because you got traded like, and, it's something as petty as unfollowing on Instagram, sure. But uh, was he number 75th overall? That's crazy. I didn't realize he went that deep. I thought he went into the second round. Yeah, you're right. Okay, cool. 
Russell Wilson was the – see? Nowadays, if Russell Wilson type caliber comes out, they're like, pick him first. <laughs> Love Fitz and Johnson on the cards. Yeah, Johnson is – dude, that guy is powerful. He's He might just be the best running back in the NFL if he can stay healthy in the Arizona Cardinals – Offensive line can block for him. What happened to the cards? Well, we when we haven't recovered since. Uh, well, actually, I wouldn't say this. I was gonna say we haven't recovered since Kurt Warner uh, retired. But actually, Carson Palmer did a really good job for the Cardinals, and we were the top team in the NFC West for a couple of years there, and we went to the NFC cha uh, Championship game. Uh, but he just got too old. So we have a tendency to get these old quarterbacks as they're at the tail end of their career. And um, then they start getting injured and Bruce Arians left. And then we just got stuck and we haven't recovered since then. So now we've had these rookie quarterbacks. We went through that same kind of rebuilding strategy when uh, Kurt Warner retired and we got stuck with this guy, John Skelton. We tried Max Hall. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah, we talked about a lot of football in this, and I'm going to go out and uh, go make some calls. And we can talk sports uh, on another video if you guys want, but we'll see you guys next time. Thanks to everyone who crushed up the likes, and appreciate everyone hanging out. It was fun. You guys are awesome. Serious, this is good. Yeah, I do miss Hawaii, of course, but I, don't, I, lo I like living here. I, I miss Hawaii because I miss swimming in the ocean. <laughs> That's it, mostly. And the weather. All right. See y'all. Thank you. Sick, sick Mitch, Joni, Peter Brown. Thank you, Laverne. Uh, what do you think of Superior Arizona? I might talk about it in my next video or one of the next videos.